Is this on? Yep, now it is. All right, there we go. <laughs> Um, so, before beginning my talk, uh, I'd really like to express my sincere thanks to NCIA for uh, hosting this Innovation Challenge and inviting us to Oslo um, to share some of our ideas in front of such a uh, distinguished audience. I'm incredibly humbled to uh, be given this opportunity, so I thank everyone very much. Um, by way of quick intro introductions, my name is Jeffrey Osborne. I'm from Kepler Communications, um, and at Kepler, we develop small satellites for telecommunications services. Um, and I'd like to begin my talk by discussing some of the, uh, the changes that are happening within the space environment that operators now need to adjust for. Um, one of those changes is that launch availability is rapidly increasing. Um, another is that it is easy now to buy off-the-shelf satellite components so that you can effectively plug together different components to make a spacecraft. Um, and the third change that's happening is that there is ubiquitous access to turnkey uh, ground station infrastructure. And all of these factors are coming together to make it uh, such that there is reduced barriers to enter space. Um, it has never been easier for, um, uh, for various parties to gain access to space. Um, and fundamentally, this is meaning that space is now contested and congested congested in ways that it wasn't previously. Um, and what this means is that it's creating new challenges or new risks and threats within the space environment. One of those risks is that satellite operators now need to routinely perform uh, spacecraft maneuvers in order to avoid uh, conjunction events or collisions in space. Um, it means that there is now uh, routinely interference uh, spectral interference when looking to communicate um, with a satellite. Um, so it degrades the ability to um, access your, your space asset. Um, but perhaps more importantly as well is that adversaries are uh, developing new technologies uh, in, order to, um, in order to jam uh, access to a spacecraft. Um, so it's degrading our ability to communicate with our own assets. Um, and as well, um, recent uh, recent anti-satellite missile tests have demonstrated to the whole world that kinetic threats do indeed exist outside of our, our atmosphere. And all of these are, are coming together um, to illustrate that we need to think differently about how we deliver and derive satellite services or how we, how we derive services from space. Um, and that's fundamentally what, what Kepler is looking to solve. Um, but returning to the theme of the conference for a moment, um, the High North itself presents its own unique challenges, particularly as it relates to satellite communications. Um, as been, has been discussed a number of times, um, when access to geostationary satellites is afforded, um, the bandwidth is limited. Coverage is typically provided as spillover coverage, um, meaning that there is low antenna gain um, on the, the High North, um, which translates into uh, reduced bandwidth that can be, uh, that can be accessed. Um, and in addition, the low elevation angle of the geostationary arc um, means that local obstructions such as trees or hills or rolling sea waves can temporary or temporarily or permanently block visibility to the geostationary arc. And all of these come together to mean that, the, uh, that our northern frontiers, particularly from a communications perspective, are fundamentally unprepared. Um, and that's what we're trying to solve. At Kepler, we are building a low Earth orbiting small satellite network in order to not only provide connectivity in the high north, but we're building this on, the, on a platform that is highly tailored to this changing space environment of congestion. In 2018, we launched our first two technology demonstration satellites. These satellites operating in KU band are now the world's only provider of wideband coverage in the poles. Already, we have demonstrated hundreds of megabits per second data speeds to existing off-the-shelf VSAT equipment that you can routinely find on vessels, on aircraft, and on land, and on, uh, land vehicles, um, which is orders of magnitude more than you can otherwise get um, within the high north. But more importantly, is that each one of our spacecraft cost about a half million dollars to go from a napkin to in-service. And this means we can deploy them in large numbers. It means that as we grow out the size of our constellation, if one satellite is denied service for whatever reason, another satellite in the network can take its place. It means that if one satellite is uh, destroyed either 
for uh, benign reasons or for uh, malicious reasons. It means we can rapidly launch new satellites and reconstitute the network to resume functionality. Um, and all of these deliver a truly resilient satellite communication service that is applicable for NATO operations. Um, if you're interested in uh, seeing a demonstration of our capabilities, I would strongly encourage everyone in this room to take a look at our website at kepler.space slash global data demo, um, where we give a video demonstration of our satellite communication service. And with that, I thank you for your attention. Jeffrey, congratulations and uh, thank you.